Dromaeosaurs represent one of the largest learning curves in all dinosaur groups. These Maniraptor and Theropod dinosaurs, members of the family Dromaeosauridae, are among the most famous and commonly depicted of all dinosaurs, and were one of the most widespread and successful theropod clades. The family was officially described and established by William D. Matthew and Barnum Brown in 1922. But at this point, many dromaeosaur genera were poorly understood. Dromaeosaurs at this time were portrayed as unobtrusive, generic predators, essentially like small versions of large theropods, such as Tyrannosaurus, one man would swiftly change everything, however. American paleontologist John Ostrom. Ostrom was responsible for revolutionizing humanity's understanding of dinosaur posture and appearance. And it was his work on the famous Dromaeosaur Deinonychus that sparked it all. In 1969, John Ostrom described Deinonychus as a creature completely separate to science's understanding of dinosaurs. A lithe, slender, speedy predator that held its tail high off the ground, with sickle-like claws for disemboweling prey. This was a far cry from the innumerable depictions of dinosaurs as sluggish, dragon-like monsters such as the ones in London's Crystal Palace Park. Ostrom created a new normal for dinosaur study, and his ideas quickly spread to known dromaeosaur genera. Our understanding of dromaeosaur dinosaurs continues to evolve to this day. Now it is widely understood that dromaeosaurs were coated in layers of feathers which were used for insulation or display. John Ostrom was one of the leading minds of the dinosaur renaissance of the 1970s, but it would appear that we are still living in one today. We now know that dromaeosaurs spread out across much of the world to fill many different predatory niches. In North America, Gigantic apex predator dromaeosaurs dominated parts of Hell Creek. South America saw the rise of heron-like fish eaters, whereas Asia managed to witness everything from speedy pack hunters to duck-like divers. Before we start this video, it's a good idea to take a look at some of the major dromaeosaur clades and subfamilies so you know exactly who we're talking about. The most stereotypical members of the family are the Dromaeosaurines, from the subfamily Dromaeosaurinae. These are usually the larger species, the heavyweights that represented an imposing threat to the herbivore herds of the late Cretaceous. North America and Asia were their main stomping grounds, but some are known from other parts of the world. Underneath those, a major group that we'll discuss today are the Velociraptorines, or members of the subfamily Velociraptorinae. You'll recognize the name from one of the most famous dinosaurs ever discovered, Velociraptor, the cunning acrobatic star of the Jurassic Park film franchise. These were generally much smaller predators, which may have hunted smaller game in packs. They were slender animals, with sharp teeth, thin limbs, and a long, tapering tail. Those aforementioned South American dromaeosaurs were the Unenlegines, from the subfamily Unenlagianae. The most slender and heron-like of the dromaeosaurs 
They are often depicted as freshwater waders, looming over rivers and lakes to catch fish. The Holscoraptorines, from the subfamily Holscoraptorinae, are named after Holscoraptor, an Asian group of bizarre duck-like dromaeosaurs that lived by water, diving after their prey like a penguin. Even more bizarre were the Microraptorians from the clade Microraptoria, strange forest-dwelling dromaeosaurs that preferred to glide from tree to tree on their feathered wings. Even modern birds share a common ancestor with the dromaeosaurs. The little robin sat outside your window right now can trace its ancestral family tree way back to the Cretaceous period when these marvelous predators were beginning to evolve and spread out. Today, we will be taking a deep dive into the differences, similarities, quirks, and adaptations of these efficient, successful, and agile hunters. We will travel to all the continents known to contain dromaeosaurs or dromaeosaur-like specimens, all the way from Patagonia to the Mongolian steppe. We will meet some of the strangest as well as some of the most famous carnivorous dinosaurs ever to grace the Mesozoic era as we travel back in time. Join us as we meet the dromaeosaurs. Our first stop on this tour through time is undoubtedly the most dangerous. North America in the Cretaceous was home to a plethora of large, powerful dromaeosaurs, some of which were apex predators in their respective ecosystems. Most of these were dromaeosaurines, and the biggest dromaeosaur of all lived here throughout the late Cretaceous, Utah Raptor. At over five meters in length from nose to tail tip, this predator was obscenely large for a dromaeosaur. But this size came at a price. It was not as fast nor as agile as its cousins, and as a result, we can assume that it was hunting significantly slower prey than other dromaeosaurs, namely iguanodonts and therizinosaurs. Its leg bones were thick, and its foot digits ended in a huge sickle-like claw, implying that this creature used thunderous kicks in order to dispatch and bring down its massive prey. It could do this without losing its balance, as its relatively immense weight would have given it a good hold on the animal it was hunting. A native of Utah's Cedar Mountain Formation, this dinosaur would have hunted on open prairies, riverine forests, and sparsely populated woodlands. But it is not known if this was a team effort. Perhaps due to its size, Utah Raptor didn't always need to hunt as part of a pack, but behavior is incredibly difficult to determine from only fossil evidence, and the research continues. Utah Raptor was closely related to a similar giant that lived in North America in the late Cretaceous, Dakota Raptor, which was only described in 2015. One of the last surviving dromaeosaurs, Dakota Raptor was over five meters in length, displaying many of the same traits as its cousin from Utah. Its sickle claws were even tougher and more flexible, however, and this was a dangerous animal indeed. Interestingly, this is one dinosaur that scientists think may have actually been sexually dimorphic. The males and females looked different, like in many species of modern birds. 
some Dakota Raptor remains are robust and tough, whereas some are more slight and gracile. While a number of factors could explain this, a leading one is that these two morphs represent different sexes, with one larger and more resilient than the other. It isn't known, however, whether or not it was the male or female that was the larger of the two. A notable feature of Dakota Raptor is its large wings. While not used for flight, it has been suggested that the dromaeosaur may have used its feathered forelimbs for balance while standing atop a dying animal. Dromaeosaurus is another dromaeosaurine dinosaur that was native to North America in the late Cretaceous. It's the dinosaur that started it all, providing the namesake of the family and subfamily it's a member of. Described in 1922 by Matthew and Brown, this was a widespread dinosaur found across Canada and the northern United States, but was nowhere near as large as the dromaeosaurine cousins from the same continent. At two meters, dromaeosaurus may not have been as large as its cousins, but that doesn't mean it wasn't capable of tackling large prey. Where on the tooth fossils from these dinosaurs and studies on the resilience of their bones indicate that large dinosaurs and other creatures were targeted by this predator. Whether or not it used the assistance of a pack, however, is unknown. Soar or nitholestine dromaeosaurs are also highly significant to the family. Three genera exist, all of them from North America, and are theorized to be a subfamily of dinosaurs that split from the main dromaeosaur line relatively early on in their evolution. All three genera, Bambiraptor, Sauronitholestes, and Atrosoraptor, are two meters or less in length and were rather lightly built. They may have closely resembled Velociraptorine dromaeosaurs and were hunters of small to medium-sized animals. Sauronitholestes is the most closely known genus and is thought to have used its keen sense of smell to help it track down a meal. The formation of the skull points to this little dromaeosaur having had a massive olfactory bulb, meaning that it could potentially smell prey from a great distance. It may have hunted in small groups in swampy regions, as well as open plains, and was the most common small theropod in its formation, Dinosaur Provincial Park. One of the most lithe and speedy dromaeosaurs of North America was without a doubt a Chiroraptor. Described in 2013, this two meter long hunter is known from maxilla and dentary bones. But from this, scientists have been able to confirm that this was a close cousin of the famous Mongolian superstar, Velociraptor. It lived in the shadow of Dakota Raptor in the Hell Creek Formation of Montana, where it likely darted through the undergrowth at great speeds after reptiles, mammals, and small dinosaurs. Finally, it is impossible to make a video discussing North American dromaeosaurs without discussing the most famous of all, Deinonychus, whom we briefly met when discussing John Ostrom at the beginning. With a name translating to Terrible Claw in English, Deinonychus was an early Cretaceous dromaeosaur, appearing on the scene around 115 million years ago, disappearing only 5 million years later. Named for its iconic sickle-like weapons on the hind limbs, 
John Ostrom used this dinosaur to spark the dinosaur renaissance. But modern depictions are almost alien in comparison to its revolutionary restoration. Looking something like an elongated, flightless eagle, Deinonychus is often depicted hunting or locked in deadly combat with the Iguanodontian dinosaur Tenontosaurus. One Tenontosaurus humerus has actually been savaged by potential Deinonychus tooth marks, and pack hunting behavior has been proposed by contemporary paleontologists. Remarkably, Deinonychus likely used its jaws as a weapon as much as its claws. Estimated bite force suggestions range between over 4,000 to over 8,000 newtons, much greater than any living carnivorous mammal today. Perhaps most amazingly, studies in 2015 analyzed the shoulder joints of immature Deinonychus specimens and proposed that they may have been capable of some form of flight, even if it was very basic. Deinonychus continues to revolutionize what we know about dromaeosaurs, even now. While dromaeosaurs are most closely associated with North America and Asia, they were also thriving in other parts of the world in the Cretaceous. Europe surprisingly saw a small group of highly successful dromaeosaur predators, including one famous face, Pyroraptor. In May 2022, Jurassic World Dominion brought the very first feathered dinosaurs to the franchise, Pyroraptor among them, as much of a leap forward as this was for the portrayal of dinosaurs in mainstream media, the design was still racked with flaws. The huge, evil-eyed dromaeosaur was shown darting through water underneath ice, covered in trailing red feathers that didn't seem at all suited to swimming. It almost looked like a reskin of the velociraptors in the franchise, Scaly, violent lizard creatures, hellbent on annihilation and carnage. Nature is much more nuanced in reality, and poor Pyroraptor was only just over a meter in length, covered in a thick layer of insulatory feathers. It would have lived its life on land, where it sped through the forests and woodlands after small vertebrates. Its long, thin tail helped it with balance and most certainly did not aid it as a paddle for diving after prey. It is unknown what color of plumage Pyroraptor was dressed in, but similar to modern birds of prey, it was likely darker, more inconspicuous than the vibrant red shown in the film. There is no way of telling, however, and at this time, much remains a mystery about how this little dromaeosaur lived its life. Also found in France was the little Vararaptor, less than two meters in length. The two species likely would have crossed paths often in the woodlands and plains of ancient Europe around 70 million years ago. It is in fact here, in Europe, that we meet our first Velociraptorine dinosaur of our journey. Neuthetes from Dorset, in what is now England, existed in the Barasian stage of the Cretaceous, and was first proposed to be an immature specimen of Megalosaurus, the iconic 9-meter theropod, closely associated with British dinosaur finds. Only teeth and select jawbone fragments are known to science, and there is still much to learn about this obscure genus. But we can make educated guesses as to what this two-meter-long dromaeosaur probably ate. 
the Low Earth Cave Formation, where Nuthetes fossils were first unearthed, is plentiful in fossil amphibians, turtles, and small reptiles, but is exceptionally well known for its diverse deposits of small mammals. Many of these diminutive vertebrates most likely met their end at the lightning-fast jaws of a hungry Nuthetes individual on a hunt. Africa is a difficult continent to discuss when it comes to dromaeosaur fossils. But there is one potential genus that has proved a convoluted mystery for paleontologists. Raho Navis. Debate has persisted since its 1998 description by Catherine Ann Forster as to what exactly Raho Navis was. It's clearly a theropod, but it's extremely bird-like, leading some to classify it as an actual bird, or at least a creature on the evolutionary path to birds. It is known from the late Cretaceous period of northwestern Madagascar and is only 70 centimeters long from nose to tail. It's the signature sickle-like claw on its second toe that might give away its true identity. Could this little feathered creature have been a true dinosaur? Or something completely different? Firstly, Raho Navis was discovered by accident. Madagascar's Maverano Formation was ravaged by a deadly natural fire in 1995, exposing a huge section of hillside. When paleontologists from the State University of New York and the University of Antananarivo arrived on scene, the bones of a gigantic titanosaur sauropod were jutting out from the rock. While excavating the titanosaur, the paleontologists uncovered the remains of a small, bird-like theropod, jumbled up in the gargantuan skeleton. The little theropod skeleton raised numerous questions. Did the quill knobs lay down the forearm? indicate that this was a true bird or a dromaeosaur. Could this little creature fly? How did it live? Many of these questions remain unanswered to this day, but studies beginning in the early 2000s have found Raho Navis to be more closely related to the dromaeosaurs than to modern birds. 2005 studies even placed the little theropod near the Unenlegines, the bizarre South American dromaeosaurs were about to meet next. Wherever Raho Navis should be placed on the family tree, some paleontologists, including the accomplished Luis M. Chiape, have actually proposed that Raho Navis was capable of a kind of clumsy, chicken-like flight. Other paleontologists have disagreed, but Chiape seems very confident in his conviction. Perhaps this really was a flying dinosaur that messily fluttered from tree to tree in Cretaceous Madagascar. Maybe time will tell. In a land of some of the largest and most otherworldly dinosaurs of the whole Mesozoic, South America's Unenlegine dromaeosaurs still managed to stand out. Unenlegines were characterized by their long snouts and long legs. And while not many are known, the majority of discoveries are centralized around South America making them something of a speciality. Many depictions of these dinosaurs show them wading through shallow lakes or rivers, poised to strike at passing fish like modern-day egrets, or perhaps gigantic, wading kingfishers. Not many members of the group 
have found their way into the general public's eye. But some names will be recognized to the seasoned dinosaur enthusiast. Buitri Raptor is perhaps one of them, a good representative of the typical Unenlagine. Described in 2005, this Argentinian dromaeosaur was about a meter and a half in length and featured the classic Unenlagine slender snout, which was embedded with rows of sharp serrated teeth. Specialized in hunting small creatures, the snout would have been a valuable and useful tool in precision hunting, picking out creatures from the water or undergrowth with ease and accuracy. Its teeth would not have allowed it to tear meat, so it is instead proposed that they were there to secure prey and kill it rather than chop it up. Much larger was Buitri Raptor's close cousin, a dinosaur named E. Papiara, which translates into English as the one who lives in the water, in reference to local Tupi mythology surrounding the area of Brazil in which it was found. Measuring between two and three meters in length, E. Papiara's remains have been associated with the remains of a fish, specifically its jaw, leading paleontologists to believe that this was a piscivorous dinosaur, or at least a partially piscivorous one. It is theorized that this dinosaur may have waded in the water to a point where fish would gather, where it would remain motionless, just like a heron. When a fish or amphibian swam by, E. papiara would strike, launching its long, slender jaws into the water to ensnare the unfortunate prey item. The subfamily's namesake, Unenlagia, also used to reside in South America, specifically Argentina. With a name that translates to half-bird, you can probably imagine what this dromaeosaur may have looked like. With the stereotypical long jaws and legs of its cousins, some of the features of the dinosaur's skeleton were initially thought to be similar to that of Jurassic bird-like dinosaurs, such as Archaeopteryx. The shoulders look almost as though they were adapted to be used in a flapping motion. But this was later disproved in a subsequent study by Kenneth Carpenter in 2002, which stated that dromaeosaurs were unlikely to be able to lift their forelimbs any higher than their back. Rather, this dinosaur may have lived a lifestyle similar to its cousins, picking food items from shallow waters, as well as chasing down small mammals and reptiles that stray too close to its slender jaws. Some dinosaurs, such as Nuquan Raptor, described from Argentina in 2005, took this slender form to an extreme. This lithe theropod, estimated to grow between two and three meters in length, was almost serpentine in some of its proportions, to the point where modern, accurate reconstructions of the dinosaur make it look almost shrink-wrapped. As far as modern science is concerned, these reconstructions are indeed accurate. Some theropods were stranger than scientists ever thought. One Unanlagine even grew to the monstrous proportions of its North American relatives. At five meters long, Austroraptor was by far the largest dromaeosaur known from South America. The skull alone was almost a meter in length. But the rest of the skeleton is stranger still. The dinosaur's forelimbs were comparatively tiny to those of other Unenlagines, so it was unlikely to be able to grab onto prey to hold it down. A strange find 
for a carnivore of such colossal proportions. The skull itself was also underdeveloped in comparison with the more northern dromaeosaurs, and it's estimated that it had a comparatively weak bite force. Also, this dinosaur's teeth were conical, designed for holding prey, rather than sharp, serrated teeth used for cutting and tearing. Leading theories on how Australaptor lived range from it being a specialized hunter of one particular food item, potentially fish, to a scavenger that would roam the land in search of carrion left by big predators. Dinosaur discoveries from across the continent of Asia have notoriously been strange over the years. Herbivorous theropods, aquatic ankylosaurs, and hadrosaurs the size of buses have all been attributed to this, the largest continent in the world. But it's the dromaeosaurs that push this land from strange to otherworldly. As we begin in the warm forests of Cretaceous China, we catch our first glimpses of the Microraptorans. Microraptor is by far the most well-known member of the clade, having enjoyed a brief spotlight in a few different pieces of paleomedia. At less than a meter in length, and with an estimated weight of just one kilogram, Microraptor was not built for life on the ground. Four wings, yes, four, assisted it with gliding through the tall trees of the Chinese forests after the insects it fed on. Scientists have, in the past, suggested that this little dinosaur might have been capable of a kind of powered flight. But debates rage on and it isn't known for certain whether or not this dinosaur could take off from a standing start. Strangely enough, it isn't just the potential aviation capabilities of Microraptor that make it a star of the dromaeosaur world, but its color. Scientists, from examining the melanosomes present in its excellently preserved remains, have been able to determine that in life, Microraptor was a shimmering, iridescent black in color, which would have reflected with verdant greens and striking purples, like a modern-day magpie. A number of dinosaurs, even some from the same localities as Microraptor, have revealed their colors to us in their fossils. We know that Anchiornis, a distant bird-like relative, for example, was black and white with a red crest. Cynoceropteryx, a Chinese dinosaur related to the famous Compsognathus, was orange with white stripes on its tail and a dark raccoon-like bandit mask on its face. And Caudipteryx, a turkey-like relative of Oviraptor, was coated in dark blacks and browns, with light bands running up its tail feathers. Perhaps the strangest dromaeosaurs of all were the Hulskoraptorines. These small theropods, which include dinosaurs such as Hulskoraptor, Natovenador, Hulsanpes, and Mahakala, were endemic to Asia and filled a very strange niche for a dinosaur to fill. That of a duck, or similar diving bird. Hulskoraptor is the most famous of the bunch, and was roughly the size of a duck itself. At around 60 centimeters in length, the dinosaur is known for its long, flat snout and flipper-like hind limbs. These little dinosaurs might have even been a bit clumsy on land. The long tail would have aided with its center of gravity when in the water, 
and it likely held the fronts of its body higher up than other theropods. The most likely use for this body plan was that it helped the dinosaur dive into lakes and rivers for fish, or small freshwater animals. Very similar to the way a modern-day merganser duck does. The low bone density of the dinosaur would have added to this, helping to keep Hulskaraptor buoyant should it need to resurface for air. If Asia is synonymous with one dinosaur in particular though, it's Velociraptor. The speedy thief itself, star of Jurassic Park, and just about every piece of paleomedia since it was discovered. It's a commonly busted myth, but Velociraptor, unsurprisingly, was not a giant scaly monster, with the capability to open doors and kill trained soldiers. But nor was it the size of a chicken, a comparison usually used when discussing the dinosaur. Instead, it was about a meter and a half in length. Deadly, yes, but not to the extent shown in Steven Spielberg's 1993 classic. It was a desert-dwelling Velociraptorine dromaeosaur, known from Mongolia's Jadokta fossil formation in the Gobi Desert, where it shared the environment with the famous Ceratopsian dinosaur, Protoceratops. It's been discussed in detail on this channel before, but exceptionally preserved fossils show these two dinosaur genera locked in combat together, preserved eternally in a struggle for survival. But what can we say about Velociraptor's intelligence? Jurassic Park does an excellent job of making these creatures scary frequently referencing the fact that the dinosaurs are acting with intent. They know what they're doing, and they know how to do it. Fortunately, for any humans present in a world full of realistic cloned velociraptors, it is thought that this little hunter was no more intelligent than your average modern bird. Now, modern birds do range greatly with their intelligence, Corvids and parrots, for example, are among some of the smartest creatures in the animal kingdom, able to recognize speech patterns and solve basic puzzles. And it's these families that would likely have outshone a Velociraptor when it came to an IQ test. However, Velociraptor was a hunter and needed to effectively plan where and how it was going to strike to give it the best chance of success. That requires a good level of intelligence. It may be wise to liken the intelligence of a velociraptor to its modern-day counterpart, a hawk or eagle. Clever in the sense that they can successfully outwit their prey to keep themselves alive, but not clever enough to plan an organized escape of a sci-fi dinosaur zoo. Alongside Velociraptor, throughout the Asian Cretaceous, were its close Velociraptorine cousins, Adasaurus, Linharaptor, and Sargon. In a world of dinosaurs, that were even more diverse than paleontologists once thought. The dromaeosaurs were something special. This loops us back round to John Ostrom. When he first described Deinonychus, there was no telling just what was going to happen to the dromaeosauridae family. From tree-dwelling gliders to slender, heron-like forms, eerily stalking down South American rivers. The dromaeosaurids are among the most diverse of all dinosaur groups, and one that has well and truly earned their fame and superstardom.